What's up guys, my name is Ace, and welcome back to another gun guide. This is the series where I go into great detail with all of the stats of every one of the weapons in Modern Warfare. And in today's episode, we're going to be moving on to the third marksman rifle, which is the Car 98K. Now this bolt action rifle has a base damage profile of 8650, although just like with the Mark II carbine, we do get a multiplier which gives us a one shot kill potential to the body. And this multiplier zone covers the upper torso as well as the shoulders. And I did want to make a little correction here. It's actually the same with the Mark II Carbine. I didn't cover the shoulders in that video. I will be updating that with a pinned comment. But I just wanted to let you know, at least in the maximum damage range, you can get a one-shot kill to the upper torso as well as the shoulders with this. As for headshots, these literally double your damage. And this means at all ranges with the Car 98, you can get a one-shot headshot. As for our rate of fire, this is literally half of what the Mark II Carbine has at just 54 rounds per minute, which is very slow, and this means if it's going to take you two shots to kill with this gun, your minimum time to kill is going to be about 1.1 seconds, which is extremely slow. And what this means is if you find yourself in a face-to-face -face gunfight and you have no option to get to cover, if you miss that first shot, you're almost definitely going to die. Getting into our range, as you can see here, we have a great one-shot kill potential at about 55 meters. And this means in all of these 6v6 and 10v10 maps, you would be really hard-pressed to find a line of sight long enough to drop off to that two-shot kill to the upper torso. However, in ground war modes, if you are really trying to hang back really far on the map and counter-snipe people, this is where you might start running into that problem of only being able to get a one-shot headshot. As for suppressors, the lightweight suppressor will reduce this range by 25%, so 100% you want to stay away from this unless you're in hardcore modes. And the monolithic suppressor will increase this range by 7.5%, which is a nice little boost. Speaking of hardcore, if it wasn't obvious enough, the Car 98 will always be a one-shot kill in hardcore modes. As for hipfire, no surprises here. It's standard hipfire for the marksman rifle category, and not really a great hipfire spread. You only ever really want to be hipfiring if you're basically touching the enemy player. When it comes to idle sway, as you can see here, there's actually a pretty good amount of idle sway. It moves quite a long distance, and it also has a pretty fast wiggle to it. So this is something you definitely have to be aware of with this gun. And it is often in your best interest to think of attachments that help with aiming stability. As for recoil, just like with the Mark II Carbine, this is kind of an irrelevant stat. I just wanted to show you anyways that this gun does recenter just fine between shots. Although with that idle sway, it's not like the bullet is going to go to the same hole every time. But in either case, still, this stat is just irrelevant. Moving on to our aim down sight time, this is a very important stat with this gun because it's effectively your time to kill with this if you're quick scoping. And this is noticeably slower than the Mark II at 367 milliseconds, but at the same time, it's still significantly faster than the sniper rifles in the game, so it's kind of meant to be that in between sort of a gun. As for our sprint out times, these are actually the same as the assault rifle category at 267 milliseconds for our standard sprint out time and 400 milliseconds for our tactical or super sprint out time. Our clip capacity is just 5 rounds with 10 in reserve, so this is one of the downsides to this gun. You don't get a lot of starting ammo with it. And our reload add time is 1.95 seconds, which is a little bit on the slow side, but when you compare it to like the Mark II for instance, at least you're loading the whole clip all at once, you don't have to load each round individually. So in that sense, it's really not too bad. Now if you did want to speed this up, you could use sleight of hand as a weapon perk, and this will cut that down to 1.64 seconds. Now finally for base stats, our movement speed is 93%, which is pretty decent for a marksman rifle. And our aim down sight stray speed is quite slow at about 40.5%. And that pretty much covers it for the important base stats of this gun. Now I want to get into some of the attachments. And more specifically with this one, I really did want to focus on attachments that help with your aim down sight time. Just because this is such an important stat with this particular weapon. So let's just have a look at these ones. Like I already said, our base aim down sight time is 367 milliseconds. And we have three attachments that can help with this. The first one is the TAC laser. This will cut this down to 317 milliseconds or three frames faster at 60 FPS, which is a very noticeable boost and that's great. Also the FTAC sport comb in the stock section has the exact same impact. So it'll cut that down by three frames, which is awesome. And then finally we have the stippled grip and with this one, it only cuts it down by one frame. So it's not quite as useful as the others, especially because the other benefit is sprint out time and sprint out time is essentially irrelevant for this particular gun. It's also worth noting the minimum aim down sight time you can get with this is 284 milliseconds and that applies by stacking the tack laser and the sport comb. And if you also add the stipple grip on there, that has no additional impact on this. So that's the absolute best that you can do. 
So that covers it for the aim down sight time attachments. Now let's get into the unique attachments and the only unique attachments that this gun has are the barrels. And for the first barrel, this is the 25.1 inch barrel. And with this, we get a 25% boost to our range, which looking at the chart, you actually can't see it. I can't zoom this map out far enough for you to see what plus 25% looks like, but I can just show you what that looks like in game. So you can see quite a nice boost here to your range. Also, this does help with your bullet velocity, which is great. It'll help you hit those moving targets at longer ranges a lot easier. And it also helps with your bullet drop, which is great. And it also helps with recoil control, which like I already told you, recoil is irrelevant with this gun. This doesn't matter at all. Now the downside to this is first off, your aimed out sight time is reduced by two frames. So it will now be 400 milliseconds, which isn't really all that nice. If you are gonna be using this, I would recommend stacking it with an attachment that helps with your aimed down sight time. And on top of this, our overall movement speed is reduced by 2%. As for the next barrel, this actually has the exact same characteristics, although to a different degree. This one just gives you a 20% boost to your range, which is still a very nice boost. It also helps with your bullet velocity, which is great, and your recoil control, which is irrelevant. And with this one, our aim down sight time is only increased by one frame rather than two, so it's now 384 milliseconds for our aim down sight time. And our overall movement speed is reduced by 1% rather than two. And finally, this brings us to the last barrel, which is the longest of the three, and we see the exact same trend. Our damage range is increased by 35%, so this is the best you can do when it comes to damage ranges with this gun. And once again, of course, we get that bullet velocity boost, as well as the increased recoil control that doesn't matter. However, this one also has some pretty steep downsides. First off, your aim down sight time is three frames slower at 60 FPS, or 417 milliseconds, which is very noticeable. And on top of that, our overall movement speed is reduced by 3%. So just like with the Mark II Carbine, with these barrels, you kind of just pick your poison. Honestly, I think you're perfectly fine using just the shortest version of this barrel. But if you want that even better bullet velocity and even more range, and you're willing to sacrifice some more aim down sight time, then you could go longer. So that finally covers it for all of the important stats that I wanted to share with the Car 98. Now it's time to move into some great attachment combinations and example class setups. Now the first one that I want to share with you guys, this is the quick scoping, aggressive sort of Car 98K class setup. This isn't meant to be a counter sniping class, although you might be able to line up those long range shots from time to time. This is more so meant for the mid range gunfights. So with this, we're really focusing heavy on aim down sight time. So we're using both the TAC laser as well as the FTAC sport comb to get the minimum possible aim down sight time. We've also got the GI Mini Reflex Sight, just because that's my favorite low zoom optic. You can use any reflex sight you wanted here though. We've also got the Focus Weapon Perk, which is going to help us with our flinch. And this is very important if you are planning on running around and getting into face-to-face -face gunfights with this, because you've only really got that one shot, and it really sucks to miss that shot because of flinch. Now this finally leaves us with the granulated grip tape for our rear grip. And the reason I'm using this one is it helps with your aiming stability and it doesn't really hurt anything too bad that we need with this gun. So it just makes it so if we do run into the situation where we see somebody at a bit of a longer range, then we can line that shot up and get a precise shot on them. Taking this one into an example class setup, we've got a 1911 as our secondary, EOD as perk one. Our perk two is ghost, even though we aren't using a suppressor with this. It is nice to stay off the radar until you fire your shot, and therefore in some situations you might be able to get a good flank on even when the enemies have a UAV up. Of course, if you wanted to, you could just swap this for hardline or whatever you wanted as well. And our tier 3 perk is going to be tune up, and that's just so we can get our field upgrade that much faster. As for our lethal, this is going to be a C4 because C4s are great for aggressive play, and finally our tactical is going to be a stim shot. So that's the first one, this designed more for aggressive play. The next one I wanted to show you guys is a nice sort of fast counter sniping class setup. With this, we're using the 25 inch barrel, which is just a nice middle ground, so it doesn't slow our aim down sight time down too much, but it does still give us a nice boost to our range and bullet velocity. Our optic on this is kind of the key to this class. This is the scout combat optic. And the reason we're using this and not like a sniper scope or a variable zoom scope is there's no scope glint with this yet it still gives you a decent magnification. This is why I like this so much for counter sniping because they won't be able to see your scope glint with this and yet you can still pick them off at a pretty decent distance. Additionally, this does help you when you're in those closer range situations as well, because even though it is more of a counter sniping class, you're still going to be using it at mid range fairly often. As for our stock, we've got the FTAC sport comb in the stock section, and that's going to help counteract the loss to our aim down sight speed with the barrel. 
And then once again, we've got focus for our weapon perk and granulated grip tape for our rear grip. Taking this one to an example class setup, this is designed more so for the ground war mode. Like I said, counter sniping sort of a class setup, and that's where you really need the counter sniper role. And with this, we've got the Desert Eagle as our secondary. Our perks are gonna be EOD, Kill Chain, as well as Shrapnel combined with those Thermites to deal with tanks. And this just leaves us with our tactical, which is once again going to be a stim shot. I really enjoy using a class setup like this in Ground War, especially in those situations where you get like an entire enemy team that just decides they wanna snipe. I love counter sniping them with this. And with that, that's finally gonna cover it for the gun guide on the Car 98K. As for my thoughts on this gun, if you play it right, this is a very solid gun, and in the right hands, it is very difficult to counter somebody using this. But at the same time, it's not super versatile, and it's not the easiest weapon to use. It definitely takes some practice to get good with it, but once you do, you can pretty much dominate people at mid to longer ranges. Of course though, that's just my opinion, and I'd like to know in the comment section below, what are your thoughts on the Car 98K? Do you like this gun? Do you think it's overpowered, underpowered, just fine how it is? And also, if you guys have missed any of the previous episodes of Gun Guides, I will leave a link to the playlist down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.